Okay, welcome back guys. Today is a big day. I'm going to show you how to install your motor and transmission into a Fox Body Mustang. I don't really see many videos on this. You know, people will just kind of say, yeah, I throw it, you know, threw the motor in there. But, you know, I did get a request on one of my videos, somebody asking how to put this in. Uh, I think probably because it's going into an AGE K member. So I've done a couple engine installs, but with the stock K member. So if you look to the left and the right, you can see where those bolts are. I'll be taking those out. That's where the engine mounts are going to actually meet up to those two points. So when you're installing your engine, obviously you want to get your engine mounts on. You want to put them on first. Okay, something I do want to mention about the AGEK member mounts is they are not the same on the driver and passenger side. So to make sure this is clear. So this is actually the driver side. And you can see the two tabs. They are centered. The passenger side is skewed to the firewall side so that's how you know that you have the correct side so the bolts that actually hold on the are actually basically the mount to block bolts i guess if you will they actually have a torque range of 35 to 60 foot pounds so this is the age cross member you already saw i just showed you on the other way that this is going to bolt and these are going to mount up to that k member if you're dealing with a stock k member uh, you're going to have the same mounting points so your engine mounts are going to be uh, mounted to the same location. The difference is your mount, you're going to have a bolt that actually protrudes from your, from your mount. So that bolt, when you, when you place the motor onto the K-member, it's uh, 80 to 106 foot-pounds is the actual um, spec. You know, somewhere around 80 and 100, you're probably good. So there's your torque spec. Uh, you can buy those bolts brand new. So these are the ARP bolts. Uh, they do make the nut that goes on the bolt um, that you can buy that actually i think you can buy the original motorcraft ones uh, if that matters to you and so then the next piece that we're going to do uh, we've got our obviously i've got my transmission made it up what i'm going to do is i'm just going to kind of give you an overview of kind of prep now this is really this isn't intended for you know guys that do this day in and day out this is kind of for the hobbyist like myself who doesn't do this every day just some things to be aware of so you don't get get all the way into this and realize you need to do something different. So you can, if you're just doing, now in my case, I'm doing the transmission and the engine. That makes a difference. And the reason why I say that is um, it, it's long. And so if you're just doing the engine, I actually recommend going ahead and placing all your accessories in. Now, probably some of the pros out there will say, oh, yeah, 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 go ahead and do it, go do it. I'm just, from experience, having done this once before, once you try to get this thing up and over the front of this, this um, radiator support, that's kind of the sucky part. Once you get over the crest of that, you're kind of home free. But if you notice where those accessories are, they're right on the nose of that. So I can just tell you from past experience, I've just had to wrestle with it with the pulley, you know, with the power steering pump and all the other stuff dangling off the front of it so i'm going to go ahead and do it in the car uh it would have been nice to do it now but i just don't want to fight it other thing to note your engine crane itself let's talk about that i don't really see people talk about this this is actually a goodyear racing one i bought from a friend of mine uh it's actually a pretty nice one uh it's rated as two ton so this is probably the critical thing that you really want to, this is, you know, kind of gets into the safety and make sure you don't do something crazy and hurt your, hurt yourself or bust your equipment and your brand new motor. So you want to make sure that you do have a crane rated for this. You know, some of the Harbor Freight ones, you know, on the budget ones, I think they go up to one ton, which should cover you. Now let's talk about how you're going to mount it. So I'm actually using a uh, carburetor style. It's EFI, but it's a single plane intake. And so I didn't need to actually put this little engine lift, um, bracket on here this lifting plate so if you're using a regular 302 style with the long runner going across they make one just the, the same uh, if you're just putting in the engine without the transmission the engine kind of comes over and drops straight down so you don't need these chains and you don't need this leveler um, it helps but you really don't need that what you need is you, you know it helps to have this lifting plate um, and then, you know, you'll just have to figure out, depending on the weight of your motor, uh, which one of these holes. Uh, I do recommend 
when you're doing this have some cardboard or have some you know like a moving blanket things like that if for some reason you know you're in a hurry you got to set the motor down on the floor because sometimes what happens uh, you can figure out now I've already lifted this up high enough but what can happen is you know to check but what can happen is sometimes these chains you might have to pull these off and maybe lift it up a link and again the reason being I'll try and get a picture here so you only have so I'm going to be rolling this out uh, in outside the garage but the crane can only lift you know whatever your crane can can lift so if you can't get it high enough to get over your radiator support then your only other option is uh, obviously without the change it's, the thing's going to go way over but in this case and the thing about this I need a leveler just makes life a hell of a lot easier uh, and then these chains so this is the only thing I could run into because I've I've, I've actually done this uh, a couple times uh, once with a you know with a pro basically a friend of mine has a shop I've done it by myself this is the first time an AGEK member that I've done it so we'll see how it goes but the only thing that can happen is sometimes you have to if you get it up over the radiator support and you find out you might have to pull it back out to readjust your chains uh, that's where the leveler comes in it can save you from having to do that so probably the other key thing to note is the tail shaft and this is whether you have a, a t5 tko no regardless of your transmission so this transmission was dynoed it's a brand new transmission but it was dynoed before it shipped here so it's going to have a little bit of fluid in it you're either going to need to get a plug or in this case i have an old uh, 28 spline yoke uh, so you'll either need you'll need the appropriate size plug they sell them at lyle sells a set of them or you can just go ahead and if you have an old yoke sitting around you can just plug it in and just saves the drip 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 i've you know you could obviously take a a ziploc and put it on the end with a zip tie um i've i've done that before not the best at least it stops it from spewing uh, i do recommend um you know if you do have a full transmission just make sure you have that plug because it makes a mess and i've done that made that mistake before and i'll be frank um I, this is a learning experience for me because i don't know what i'm going to get with this age k member what my clearance is going to be you know is different than the stock k member so you know we're all going to learn this together and i'll you know i'll show you good bad or indifferent uh as far as prep you know i do have some wire in here i got to snip that guy off i'm getting ready to take this thing off the jack stand so we're probably about 30 minutes away i got a neighbor who's going to come over we'll plunk this guy in and hopefully uh, have an engine and transmission in my car today okay and the last little prep that we want to talk about uh is there your mount for your transmission i'm using the stifflers comes with different spacers i think i'll probably do a whole video on this uh, just to kind of explain what's going on i'm actually going to be using their i'm going to actually be using and i'll again i'll go over this probably in another video but this is for the drive shaft loop if you have an aod versus a t5 transmission there is a difference between the exhaust hanger so make sure that you have the correct one and then the other thing you need to make sure that you do is that the adjustable there's a difference between the aod and the t5 and they do make an adjustable one so that you can slide the arm back and forth or the cross member back and forth uh, there's another set that is fixed i'll go over all this in the video but just make sure when you're getting ready and get prepped make sure that you do have the correct cross member and that make sure that you have the correct exhaust hanger and then probably the last little bit of advice I would just give you is just make sure you know, give everything a once over. You know, you're in here doing work. You got washers and bolts and screws and nuts laying around. Uh, tape everything off. I'll be taping this guy off in a second. Uh, just tape off any little hole. It's just Murphy's Law. It just never fails. You, the one hole that you leave open, say it won't be a problem. Something just goes rolling right, right for it. Save yourself the aggravation okay so at that point guys our next step is going to be to go ahead and throw this guy in the car and we'll see how it goes <laughs>
Okay, guys, at long last, she's in. I'd say it took about an hour and a half or so. We had to adjust some things, so I'll put this point out here. What we had to do is that once, you know, of course, once you get the front end jacked up, and in this case, I actually used jack stands initially, but then I went around and I used my ramps just to give myself more room crawling underneath. Uh, so that's kind of one of the things to think about is now that it has the AGE cross member, when you look down there, it doesn't have that, you know, I don't know what that is, inch and a quarter steel that it's built out of. I don't want to take a jack, start cranking up on that. So I'm probably thinking that I've lost a jack point. So something to think about. So there is a fair amount to unpack here. Uh, this is a 351 block. And it definitely takes up more room in the engine bay. Now, this has really tall valve covers. And again, just for anybody watching, just to be clear, I have the AGEK member. So yours could be slightly different. Let me just show you. There's not a whole heck of a lot of space between my valve cover and my booster. In fact, if you were to look down at my mount, you can see I kind of had to shove the motor over. I'd say about a half an inch. It's not all the way over, but it's, you know, good good portion of the way pushed over to the passenger side um, I wouldn't go ahead and install your headers and thinking you're just gonna slam this in you do have plenty of room on the passenger side so I'll just be able to come from underneath and pop those headers in hopefully <laughs> so on the driver side you can see here there's no way you're getting set along tube headers through there so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to you can't you know the the flange on the bottom is too big to go down underneath and it's because the drive shaft is already in place you can't bring it from on you know from the bottom and there's no way to squeeze it down from the top so I'll go ahead and I again I don't know how this is gonna play out we'll see when I get to the header section but I'm just gonna disconnect the rag joint hopefully I can just wiggle it in here and then reinstall the um, steering shaft if not then I might have to go to like the double jointed Maximum Motorsports one. Uh, other things to note, uh, you can see the rear, you know, getting that header in. That rear spark plug is going to suck getting in there. So I'll probably, when I do that kind of stuff, take the valve covers off just to give a little bit more room in there. And so I'm going to show you how we adjusted the chains. First time we did it, I had it just kind of hanging flat, so to speak, and I used the leveler. And then I couldn't, when we got it in, it just didn't quite have the angle that I needed. So I'm going to show you here, and I'll kind of pause it through so you can see how we adjusted the chains. And that way I had, between the leveler and this, I had, you know, one end shorter than the other on the leveler. And then, you know, once it crested over the top of the radiator support, at that point you start lowering the crane down. And as the crane lowers down, you know, the motor, the tail shaft, or the transmission goes back. So you probably, I'm not sure how well that showed up in the time lapse, but... That's pretty much the way to do it. And as you drop the crane, it slides the motor back. So I'm really glad that I didn't put the accessories on the front end of this thing. It was pretty hefty. And just bringing it over the nose of that radiator support. You know, if you have a lift or some other means, but for a, you know, backyard, you know, doing it on jack stands, doing it in your driveway, it just would, it probably would have just added to the, added to the issues, less things to, less things to clear it so I'm glad I did when it when I brought it over I, it just made it easier it gave me more room so the bolts that I used are not what AGE provided with their kit if you look at my install video I'll link these these are actually the same bolts and the same nut that are used on the K member install so I'll go ahead and link that in the description I ordered these from McMaster it really it fills the hole up they don't wiggle around nice and secure and beefy uh, as far as clearance, now that we're down here, tons of clearance, which is kind of the, what you would expect aftermarket K-member. Oil pan, you know, on the front sump, I probably have maybe three-eighths of an inch. So it wasn't miles away, but it easily cleared. I do have miles of clearance between, in between the two, the front and the rear sump. I probably have an inch and a half, if not two inches, of clearance between the oil pan and the top of the steering rack. So if you've ever installed or tried to change your power steering lines, you know that you know there's not a lot of room in there. So now access to the steering rack, and especially the 
the supply and return lines super easy now so that just about wraps it up guys uh really i think probably for me the best thing is having a second set of hands had a neighbor give me a hand you know just just to hold things or move things as it's swinging around as it's coming from the crane and then the other thing i should note almost forgot is i actually installed my transmission with the pa performance transmission line actually hooked up i left the bolt loose in case i had to hurry up and pull it out uh, didn't interfere at all i didn't have to readjust or do anything with it uh, so i just go ahead and bolt that bolt that guy down uh, that was pretty easy i'm hoping the only thing i don't know is is it going to interfere with any of my ac stuff so we'll see uh, that's really kind of what the one unknowns uh, as far as you know where the engine's positioned <clears throat> i think that's that's probably the biggest reason why i wouldn't use this again i think i would go with the maximum motorsports and i think the biggest reason is i like the old style mounts to be honest with you i didn't really <clears throat> it wasn't that these were hard it just it seems like you get it in it's located it's centered you put in the bolt you bolt it down it's in the right location so and here you know i had to kind of move it it wasn't self-centering so to speak you know or at least you know maybe it's not an issue i don't know um but i just i just i think it just seems more natural just doing the other way where you just once it's set in you get that bolt and it's got the little alignment holes on the traditional motor mounts so um just being you know full disclosure here right we're not going to sugarcoat it i think you know i don't think there's anything wrong with it it seems strong the welds at least they look good you know we'll see how it does over time car doesn't get a lot of miles on it but you know what i would recommend is if you're going to do a build like this personally i wouldn't do age i would actually go back and i would do the if i was doing this all over again i would probably use the maximum motorsports ones okay guys so you know the rest of the build will be continuing on it's in uh, major milestone really happy helps me clear off some of the space in my garage and now we can start getting it together as far as the order uh, before i can really go gangbusters on everything uh, obviously i'll get the harness in uh, get that done and and finally put up on along the firewall and just bolt down my my brake lines but i really need to get the supercharger and elbow and throttle body so that that way i know what's left for space Okay, guys. Hey, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.